guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be talking about something a little bit difficult for me, but I think it's not only necessary, but I think it's potentially helpful. You guys can let me know in the comments, potentially this is completely useless garbage. Who knows, <laughs> you'll let me know. So relatively recently, I made a video about how I moved. Now I had kind of secretly moved to the East Coast for a year. I didn't really tell anyone. I didn't really announce it on YouTube. I responded to a couple comments on Instagram about it because people saw that there was snow and they're like, what the fuck? Where in California are you that there's this kind of snow? And that's when I kind of just said that I was on the East Coast. So I lived there for a year. I made a video about it. Basically where I lived was affecting me negatively and I just felt isolated and a bunch of things. And this is not to shit on the East Coast or where I lived. It's just like there are some places you mesh with and some that you don't and I did not mesh well there. So I returned here to California. I have always said that Instagram posts are essentially highlight reels. For the majority of people, some people are like super, super transparent and will post pictures of themselves crying and like put a long post about what they're going through. And that's totally fine. I think that can be healthy, you know, if it doesn't become like a form of therapy, because then I feel like it can become unhealthy. But anyway, but for the majority of people, what you post on Instagram are good times or what appear to be good times, things like that. The majority of people are posting just their highlights, which there's nothing wrong with doing as long as we can all acknowledge that because I think part of the toxicity of social media comes from thinking, oh, this person has a perfect life because you see their feed and everything looks great, but you know, that's not necessarily the reality. So I've made a video like this before and I wanted to make a video about this again, specifically because I had made a video talking about how I was in a toxic headspace. So I kind of wanted to talk about a couple Instagram posts that I made and kind of talk about what I was going through when I took that picture slash when the picture was posted, whatever. Just for the sake of transparency and as a reminder that, you know, even though you might think someone is fine or the picture looks good or whatever the hell it is, there probably is something else going on and not necessarily negative, but people have lives, right? So I don't think I've ever been particularly one to hide struggles. I don't talk about it constantly because I find that that would be very annoying for everyone, but I figure every so often it's good to just kind of open up about those things. So this one was during the Christmas season. As you can see, there's the Christmas tree, there's me. In the caption, I was pretty open about being kind of not in the best headspace. That has a lot to do with Christmas. So it's not just about the place like physically that I was living at. This was, I think, kind of the beginning of not a downward spiral because I feel like I had been gradually just, you know, plummeting. But I feel like this part was a really, really big blow emotionally for me because I'm a person of tradition. So like once I set up traditions, and I do them for enough time that it really becomes a tradition, it's really hard for me to let go of that. And it's very hard for me to, I wouldn't say not fixate on it, but it's very hard for me to kind of ignore it or move on from it. Now, one of my traditions when I was living here, pre-COVID, blah, 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 was that on New Year's, we'd always go to Las Vegas because it's a fun place. And it's a place that I think I can feel very easily lighthearted and just kind of not give a fuck about things because, you know, you see people on the strip wearing crazy outfits, crazy wigs, crazy everything. And I feel like in small doses, that's a good place for me to be because it feels like you're not being judged because no one cares or they're too drunk to judge you. <laughs> so I always liked going away for New Year's and this is first world problems. I said that in the post also, but I think that this part specifically because I didn't like Christmas and with the isolation, because usually we'd spend Christmas with Jacob's family who are all here in California. It was just Jacob and I, which I'm grateful that Jacob and I could quarantine together because I know some people were alone, but there was this feeling of stillness and quietness and along with not liking Christmas and then along with knowing that a tradition that I really hold on to and that has a lot of emotional value for me, knowing that that wasn't going to happen, the whole thing put together really put me in a very, very bad headspace. In fact, for a lot of these pictures, you know, some people might ask like, oh, if you're in that bad of a headspace, why are you taking a picture? Now, there are multiple reasons for that, but there are plenty of times where when I lived in said place on the East Coast, I would sleep until two because I was wildly depressed. Like I wouldn't be able to get up before 2 p.m. 
And then there were times where I didn't even have to film or whatever. And at 7 p.m. I'd just be like, I'm going to put on some makeup. I And it's it's a little bit therapeutic for me. And it's also kind of like an act of self-care. So then when you look at yourself in the mirror, for me, I didn't feel disheveled. I didn't feel like a piece of garbage, though I felt like garbage. Because, you know, when you wake up so late every day, it feels like the day is basically already over, let alone in the winter when it gets dark early. And so I remember this was one of those days where I'd woken up late. I put on makeup just to kind of feel better. And I think part of me also takes these pictures so I can look back and be like, I remember what it was like to be in that headspace. And so it makes me more grateful for the headspace I'm in now, which is definitively a better headspace. This one, oh God, this one was pretty bad. So basically there was a sale on a website that tends to be pretty expensive, but that sells dresses and tops that I really, really like. Now the issue with that website is that some of their designs, not all of them, but some of them really, really cater to people with smaller busts. Now I don't have massive boobs or anything, but the top I chose was really catered to someone with smaller boobs. But since it was on sale, I was like, let me just try, it might work out. Which might sound like not a big deal, right? Cause it's just like, dude, it's just a top, like calm down. But enter body dysmorphia, enter me being recovered from an eating disorder, enter me not working out as I used to because of COVID and because I just was super depressed and really was not energetic enough for it, frankly. And when I took this picture, this top, when I say this top was so fucking tight that I felt like I could barely breathe. And when I took it off, I had marks on my arms because you can see that there's like a ruching up on the shoulder. The part that's like on the arm from the shoulder was so tight that I felt like my blood circulation was stopping. And it was so tight around my waist. And if you don't know my like problem area where I have most of my body dysmorphia is like my, my stomach area. My stomach area has always been the bane of my existence. I remember how triggered I was after I took the pictures, looking back at them and then just taking off this top that was wildly uncomfortable, that made me feel ugly, that made me feel just horrible about myself. Like I genuinely felt monstrous. And I know that sounds really dramatic, but I just remember looking at myself in the mirror and being, it took my breath away, but in the most negative way ever, because it was more like, I can't believe this is what you look like. Which by the way, this is not fishing for compliments. This is just me being very blunt about what I was thinking. It just felt like I was looking at a monstrosity. I remember specifically just like this top sitting in the corner of my wardrobe. And in fact, I think I ended up donating it because it just sat in the corner of my wardrobe. I never put it on for a second time. Ah, yes. So enter the corset mode. Now I love corsets. I love the aesthetic. I love everything about them, frankly. But there was a point where corsets kind of became my way to not wear something tight, but also kind of show some level of figure as opposed to like now. So like I put a corset, like you can see in the picture with a big t-shirt. But the reason why I put it here was like, yes, the aesthetic, sure, whatever. But the first place thing was like, I want to hide everything that I feel is wrong with me, which like I said, is my midsection. And so I'd put on the corset to kind of try and hide what I was scared of in a way, disgusted with in a way. It became kind of shitty because I remember that I started to grab my corset, not because I was like, oh, it'll look so good with this, but rather like, I want to squish everything into something. Like I want to hide everything, which is not the right mindset to go into any piece of clothing with. Like. I wear big t-shirts right now because I'm going through a moment with body dysmorphia. We can talk about that at another time if you're interested, but I've always loved big t-shirts, but there's also that thin line where it's like, is this comfort or is this me trying to run away from my problems and hide my body because I can't stand any part of it or of my midsection anyway. And I remember this picture, I was feeling pretty insecure because these boots are badass. I will stand by that. But because my thighs are voluptuous, the back of the boots wouldn't zip up, which again, isn't that big of a deal because I'm not that dysmorphic about 
my legs, thank God. But still, when you have this shitty feeling about feeling disgusting, and then there's an additional thing that usually doesn't make you insecure, but there's that tiny thing that happens, like your boots not zipping up because your thighs are apparently too big for them, you're just kind of like, well, fucking hell. You know, like it feels like you can't catch a break, which I know these are all like not really big problems, but I'm just kind of taking you through what was going through my head. And in fact, there's another picture where I did a Tinker Bell, Tinker Bitch cosplay here, where I'm also wearing a corset. Can you guess why that is? Now I like it with the outfit granted, but again, that was not the first reason why. The first reason why was still, let's shrink you down basically. And I just wanna note, none of what I'm saying is like, you need to be X weight, you need to be size, whatever. I'm just talking about what goes on in my head because the most ironic part of body dysmorphia, which I know a lot of my friends relate to, is that when I see someone who's my size, which is hard to tell because of body dysmorphia, I don't even really, I can't really visualize my size, but I'll ask Jacob, I'll be like, is that person kind of like my body type? Just for my own mental sake, right? And when I see them, I never judge them the way I judge me. That's the best part of it. The most frustrating part is that you'll see people who are your size, bigger than you, smaller than you, whatever, and you will never judge them the way you're judging you. Like you won't even think the negative things that you think about you, but that's because it's someone else. But when it's you, it's like free range to just be a total bitch about it. And last of all, there's this picture. And this picture is kind of a double-edged sword because I really like how it came out. I really like fucking around with lighting in pictures and I got a sunset lamp. So I really like how this one came out. But the kind of backstory of this one is a little bit sad as well because baths are a active self-care for me, but I feel like they also were a sign that something was wrong. And when I say that, self-care is great, but it's also like, there comes a point when it's like, if I'm taking two baths a day, is it still self-care or am I kind of just trying to cope? And fine, it might not be the worst of coping mechanisms, but it was an indication to me that something was not right or that I wasn't doing that well mentally because obviously it meant that I kind of had to escape the world for a bit twice in a day, which for me wasn't healthy. And everyone has their own standards of what's healthy for them. So this was one of those days, I believe, where I took two baths. And this was again, one of those situations where I literally put on my makeup for no other reason than to have some kind of therapy to feel less shit about how I looked. I remember when I got out of the bathtub, and this relates back to body dysmorphia, I remember stepping out of the bath and right in front of the bath, there's the mirror. So if the bath was behind me, that'd be the mirror. The moment I stepped out, I would just be like, and turn around because I didn't want to see what I looked like, like my the reflection of my body just did not want to see that. In fact, this was kind of an era, a Julia era of avoiding all mirrors unless they were, you know, like this, like framed like this, or unless I was wearing a big t-shirt, I did not want to see anything. That's the story of what was going on behind my Instagram pictures. I'm sorry if it's a bit depressing, but for full transparency, like honestly, that's just what was going on. And we have to remember where I was living was toxic for me. So I think everything was exacerbated. You know, usually it might've been more mild, but I feel like in these situations, it was all feeling much more overwhelming than it would say today. You guys can let me know what you think. Let me know if you like these kinds of videos. Let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll catch you guys next time.